What's going on there, YouTube, and welcome back to another comic book video. Okay, guys, so we are going to actually wrap up our coverage over the new 52 Teen Titans. Yeah, this is going to be the last video. And the reason why I say that is because this is going to be basically two stories in one. Because after the trial of Kid Flash, our last Teen Titans video, you had the aftermath of the trial of Kid Flash, and then you had Teen Titans Annual number three to kind of wrap up the Teen Titans series and the new 52. So yeah, this is the last video that we are going to do. Because honestly, I want to go ahead and move on to other projects. And when it comes to the Teen Titans and the new 52, they were a group of characters that fans just did not like. Like fans did not like this version of the Teen Titans. But either way, we actually do pick up with the aftermath of the trial of Kid Flash, which honestly was a pretty decent storyline for the most part. There were some parts in that storyline where I was kind of like, man, this sucks. This honestly sucks, my dude. But anyways, here is the aftermath of the trial of Kid Flash. Now, when we finally jump into the aftermath of the trial of Kid Flash, we actually pick up in the past. And the reason why we pick up in the past is because we are going to learn a little bit more about Solus. Now, remember, Solus was one of the original team members of the Teen Titans. Now, when Kid Flash found her, she was actually locked up in a cell. And the reason why she was locked up in a cell because she was captured by an evil organization known as Nowhere. Nowhere was going around kidnapping teenage metahumans. And the reason why they were doing that because their boss, Harvest, he came from an alternate timeline to recruit teenage metahumans to take back with him to his timeline to fight against other metahumans that had ruined his timeline. And so when he came over here in the main DC timeline, he made the evil organization known as Nowhere to kidnap teenage metahumans. And so that is how Solus got captured because she was a teenage metahuman. Now, of course, every few months, you had Harvest do a thing called the calling. And what would happen is, all the teenage metahumans that he had captured, he would make them fight against each other to basically see who is the strongest. If the strongest win, they will win and lead the calling and be able to join his army and go with them to that alternate timeline to fight against the supposedly evil metahumans in his timeline. Now, with that being said, though, you have Solus right now in the middle of the calling event, one of the many calling event. And while she's kind of running around with a guy she believes that she can trust, that is the moment you have the guy show his true colors, that he basically brought her to a trap to kill her off, to get rid of her, because that'll be one less person that he has to deal with. But again, that all took place in the past. Now, of course, after that guy has showed his true colors and believed that him and his gang would be able to actually get the jump on Solus, you have Solus show her powers, which, of course, was able to blow all the guys away to keep herself alive. Now, after her powers had activated, of course, she began to freak out because at that point, she still did not know how to control her powers. But either way, though, that is the moment you have Harvest appear. And when Harvest appears, you have Solus ask him, why is he doing this? Why is he kidnapping teenage metahumans and he tells her right now you do not understand but you will soon understand why i have to do this and you have harvest basically carry her away and so after that we actually jump back into the present moment now, the reason why I say the present moment, because we have to remember the Teen Titans had traveled to the future, the future where Kid Flash is from. Now, in that future, Kid Flash was a trouble character, kind of like anti-hero, kind of bad. But either way, though, with his trial happening, it happened in the future. But after the end of his trial, Kid Flash was found guilty. Now, after being found guilty, you have Solus 
kill one of the judges in his trial to basically be thrown into prison with him because she's madly in love with him. That all took place back in our last video, the trial of Kid Flash. And matter of fact, I will put a link down below so that you can go back and actually watch that video. But that is why right now on your screen, you see Kid Flash and Solus locked in prison. Because with Kid Flash being a bad guy in this future, he was basically found it guilty. And Solus could not live without her man, and so she killed a judge to be thrown in prison with him. And this leads into a sad moment because you have Red Robin actually saying goodbye to both Kid Flash and Solus because at this point, the Teen Titans, they can't do anything at all because when it comes to the Teen Titans, Kid Flash, in this future, he killed people. Solus just killed a judge. The Teen Titans cannot do anything at all because these two characters have to actually live out their crime. They have to go to prison and live out their crime for everything they have done. And so you have Red Robin saying goodbye because he remembers everything the Teen Titans have gone through in this entire series to only see two friends of his become murderers and now being locked away in prison. It's hard for Red Robin because he knows once they're thrown away into their own prison, Red Robin and the rest of the Teen Titans are going to go back to their timeline the present day and they'll never see Kid Flash nor Solus ever again. And so you have Red Robin give that final goodbye to two of his oldest teammates. Now you do have Raven kind of check up on Red Robin, but there is something I do want to mention. Because remember, in a couple of videos ago when Trigon appeared, Trigon appeared and wrecked the Teen Titans. Now at the end of that storyline, we saw Raven actually join the Teen Titans, and the Teen Titans believed that Raven turned good to actually fight against her father. But to only find out that Trigon has a hidden plan for his daughter, down the road and so right now raven is pretending to be a good guy but in reality she's a bad guy she's going to kill the teen titans down the road for her father trigon but you do have her right now kind of checking up on red robin to see how he's doing and you have red robin kind of play it off but he wants to see wonder girl and there is a good reason why and the reason why, because when it comes to Red Robin and Wonder Girl, throughout the Teen Titans series, these two characters have gone back and forth between the idea of can they be together or not. And so with that being said, there was also a point Wonder Girl was with Superboy. And we saw those two actually get very close. But that is long gone, because now you have Wonder Girl getting back with Red Robin and actually making it official. And the reason why I say official because when you have Red Robin check up on Wonder Girl, the reason why because the Teen Titans have gone through a lot. But when Red Robin was bringing this team together, Wonder Girl did not want to be on this team at all. She hated the idea. But over the years, being with this team, she changed her mind and began the process of actually loving the team. And so with that being said, she hates the idea that her team that she fell in love with is breaking apart. Because Kid Flash and Solus, they're being thrown in prison. The Teen Titans never found Skitter, one of their old team members, and Superboy is staying in this future timeline. Now, the reason why he's staying here is for a whole complete reason that I do not want to get into. Because if I do, it will bring so many more questions down the road. But either way, though, you basically have Red Robin comfort Wonder Girl. Kind of help her realize that everything is going to be okay. And then they kiss. So there you go. And so with all that being said, you do have the future police force being able to send the Teen Titans back to the present day. Now remember, only a couple characters are going back to the present day. And so that would be Red Robin, 
Wonder Girl, and Raven. Now, after our characters are able to be teleported back into the present day of the DC timeline, when they arrive, they are confronted by Bonker and Beast Boy. Now, remember, Bonker and Beast Boy are actual members of the Teen Titans, but they were not part of the all the crazy time traveling adventures the rest of the Teen Titans went through. Matter of fact, Bunker and Beast Boy has stayed in the present day the whole time. But when you have the Teen Titans who were in the future come back to the present day and be confronted by Bunker and Beast Boy, you have Bunker tell them they're being attacked right now. And you're kind of like, okay, but who is attacking you? And that is the moment we see two young men right now attacking Bunker and Beast Boy, and now the rest of the Teen Titans who just came back from the future. And so when we jump into Teen Titans number 30, we actually do get the chance to learn the names of these two characters, and their names are The Light and The Way. Yes, that is their names, The Light and The Way. And matter of fact, this is their only appearance ever in DC Comics. It really feels like DC only brought these characters here to be kind of written off very quickly so that the plot can be moved forward. Because while you have the Teen Titans fighting against these two characters and the Teen Titans are struggling, in the middle of the fight, you have Raven actually get hurt. And here's the thing though, Raven is excited about getting hurt because when it comes to Raven, for a long period of time, she could not get hurt at all because of her connection to her father, Trigon. But with her getting hurt, it's kind of like that connection is gone. She's actually free and she actually loves that. And so right now in the middle of the fight, she's happy for getting hurt. Now, you do have the Teen Titans do get to a point where they're no longer able to fight against the light in the way because apparently these two characters are just so powerful they actually have our heroes pinned to one specific spot in this area and it does look like the light in the way could possibly win the battle but out of nowhere something happens behind the backs of the light in the way where it comes to the light he just disappears something happens to him where he fades away and on top of that you do have the um the way freak out he's kind of like oh my god my brother is gone what in the world is happening and then you have the way get knocked out and now you have the teen titans wonder who in the world just saved them from the light and the way and that is the moment we come to find out they were saved by Skitter. Now, Skitter was on the team at the very beginning of the new 52 Teen Titans. But at the end of the calling event, she just disappeared. And Teen Titans just never found her. And DC never thought to bring her back until the very last issue of the series, which is this book right here. Because after this book right here, there was the annual and then this series was was basically canceled and so it felt like DC just wanted to bring her back to say goodbye and also when she does come back she does now have control over her bug form because when it came to Skitter when she was basically in her bug form she could technically not control this bug form it's kind of like Bruce Banner and the Hulk where Bruce Banner cannot control the Hulk side when it came to Skitter she could not control her bug like form and so now we see that she's able to actually control it which is a huge progress for her and you have the teen titans so excited to see her because they're like oh my god we haven't seen you in so long we are horrible friends because we technically did not look for you after you disappeared but thankfully you're here now and you're normal too this is crazy. This is amazing. But that is the moment we actually meet the mother of Skitter as well. And that is the moment we come to find out that Skitter's mother is actually Amanda Waller. Yes, you heard that correct. Amanda Waller is the mother of Skitter, which honestly is just crazy and wild. But yes, you heard that correctly. Amanda Waller is the mother of of Skitter. 
But with that being said, though, the last time the Teen Titans had actually saw Amanda Waller was when Trigon appeared. And Amanda Waller did tell the Teen Titans if they ever meet ever again, they're going to be enemies. And so right now you have the Teen Titans getting ready to bring down Amanda Waller because Amanda Waller does work for the U.S. government. She belongs to one of the many organizations, and right now, she brought a lot of firepower to bring down the Teen Titans. But that is the moment you have Skitter tell both sides to just stop, because apparently Skitter made a deal with her mother to have the Teen Titans left alone, that Amanda Waller can no longer go after the Teen Titans at all. And so with that, you have Amanda Waller just leave. She's kind of like, hey, listen, my daughter likes you guys, and she was able to convince me that you guys are good guys. It's just that you need to get better at being a team. You need to get better at being heroes, but your heart is in the right place. So, And also, my daughter likes you, so you have Amanda Waller just leave. That's really it. This is how crazy this story ends for the Teen Titans, and it only gets crazier. And this leads into the hot mess origin of Skitter. Let me explain. So when Skitter first appeared, we did not get an origin for her at all. We got some background things for her, but that is really it. We never learned how she got her powers. And then right after we got her, she disappeared. And we never saw her again until this point right here. And so with that being said, you have Skitter tell us that because she was one of the smartest teenagers in the world, she had an internship at Star Labs where she built a device that was able to actually communicate with other beings from other dimensions. And matter of fact, she was able to do that. But of course, the dimension that she picked in that dimension were bug-like creatures that were trying to come over to the earth dimension to take over the earth now with all that being said this is where things get very annoying because we do not get the chance to actually learn the name of those bug-like creatures or the dimension they came from but apparently when one of those bug-like creatures came through the portal they grasped skitter turn her into one of them, but hoping to make her be a slave for them to lead a pathway to lead the rest of their army to come through the portal to take over the earth dimension. But with Skitter still having some control over her mind, she was able to close the portal after being made into a bug-like creature to keep that invasion coming. And we never learned the name of those bug-like creatures. But either way, we now have Skitter, and that is her origin. It's trash. And this is where things get even crazier, because then you have Grimm appear. Now, when Grimm appears, Grimm reminds us that he first appeared in the early days of the New 52 Teen Titans. And actually, he was a one-off villain that they were able to defeat very easily. And so, honestly, him being here is really minor. And the only reason why he's here is to tell the Teen Titans that apparently he had a bomb set in one of the boats. And so, of course, you have Grimm say that bomb is going to go off to hopefully kill you guys. Now, of course, you do have Beast Boy knock out Grimm. Raven reads his mind to find out where the bomb was planted. And you have Bonker being able to protect the Teen Titans from the explosion. Scott Lodell rushed his story really fast to wrap this series up. And then the last section of Teen Titans number 30 is just really us seeing what Kid Flash and Solus are going through right now in the future. Because yes, they were thrown into prison, but in the future, prison is a tad bit different. You are thrown to a prison world where you're forced to work and protect yourself from other prisoners. And so honestly, it's Scott Lodell kind of saying, hey, this is where Kid Flash and Solus are at at the moment. We could possibly see them down the road. We won't. But either way, this is what prison is like in the future. And honestly, for the last book of the Teen Titans, this was a huge letdown. It was Scott Lodell just saying goodbye to the book and trying to move on. But fortunately, there is one more book we have to cover, which is 
Teen Titans Annual number three. Because honestly, it does answer one big question. What about Harvest? And so we then jump over to Teen Titans Annual number three. Now with the third annual of Teen Titans, you basically pick up in the past, eight hours from the present day. And apparently the Teen Titans have been defeated. And the reason why they have been defeated is because apparently Red Robin has trusted somebody who he should have not trusted. And apparently that person is a bad person, but for some strange reason, Red Robin still trusted that person, and now the Teen Titans have been defeated, and it looks like Red Robin could possibly die by the hands of that person. But then we pick up with Red Robin and Wonder Girl. Now, of course, this picks up moments after the ending of the last chapter where the boat blew up. You have Red Robin kind of sad because the boat actually belonged to Bruce Wayne and Bruce Wayne gave the boat over to Red Robin as a way for the Teen Titans to have their own base. But either way, you do have Red Robin kind of in his thoughts about how everything gone down for the Teen Titans over the last couple months and you do have wonder girl walk up you have wonder girl being that girlfriend kind of like we did a lot of good things so why are you trying to basically put your mind in the wrong place you should be able to think about all the good we have done in the world we fought against the joker we fought against Grimm. we took down nowhere we have done a lot of good things as the Teen Titans. So why is your mind going in dark places? And you have Red Robin kind of like, hey man, listen, it's just who I am and basically who raised me, which is Batman. But then you have Wonder Girl and Red Robin be confronted by another team member of the Teen Titans. And that person is Skitter because apparently right after the boat had blew up, Red Robin had asked Skitter to go into the river to look for different things that could belong to him and the rest of the Teen Titans. And of course she did find something, but the item she found apparently scares Red Robin. And so with that, you have everyone wondering why is Red Robin so concerned about the item that she had found? We didn't pick up with Raven because right now you actually have Raven going to meet up with the rest of the Teen Titans because apparently whatever scared Red Robin, he has called a meeting with the Teen Titans. And so Raven is about to go meet up with the rest of the Teen Titans, but she begins to walk away because she sees how happy the Teen Titans are and she feels like if she kind of still be part of the team she's only going to bring them down and possibly get them killed because she still believes that her father has some kind of evil plan in the works that involves her but then she runs into bonker who kind of be that good friend to say hey listen you're part of the team you have done a lot of good for the team and you've been there with us through a lot of our bad problems. On top of that, you have gotten better. You told us your story. You told us what happened. You broke the bond between you and Trigon. So why not come over and sit with the rest of the team? And you have Raven say, yes, I'll do it. And Bunker basically walks her over. And that is the moment you basically have Red Robin tell the Teen Titans that the device that Skitter found in the river was made by Red Robin to tell him if ever Harvest shows up in the world again so that the Teen Titans can't go over there and actually stop Harvest. Because remember, Harvest is from a different timeline. In his timeline, there's a war between humans and metahumans. And so what Harvest did was, he went back to the DC timeline built a organization known as Nowhere and had Nowhere go around kidnapping teenage metahumans and then put those teenage metahumans in a competition called the Coal in the Sea, who will be a strong enough member of his army to come back to his timeline to help him fight against the metahumans in his timeline. Now, of course, the Teen Titans were able to kind of slow down harvest plans but harvest has been missing this whole time and so red robin made a device to tell him and the rest of the teen titans if harvest ever pops up in this timeline ever again and so right now you have the teen titans say 
okay, we're down to basically stop Harvest because Harvest is the reason why the Teen Titans came together. And so now their first mission could be their last mission. They want to bring down Harvest once and for all. Now you do have the Teen Titans actually go over to Africa because that is where Harvest is hiding at. But here comes the problem though. When they do arrive at that location in Africa, they are confronted by people who had died over the time the Teen Titans were a team. And what I mean is there is a character known as Artemis and Artemis actually died back in the Coaling event, the big event the Teen Titans had to go through. When they last saw her, she had died, but she's here right now alive again. And you have Artemis tell the Teen Titans that Harvest has saved her, Harvest has healed her, Harvest had done a lot of things for her and everyone at this community that Harvest has made. And this is where things get even crazy because when they go inside the building, they are confronted by Tempest. And Tempest had also died in the earlier chapters of the Teen Titans series. But here he is now alive again. And you have Tempest kind of acting like uh, Artemis did. She's saying, uh, she, sorry. He is saying like, basically Harvest had saved them. Even after they had died, Harvest had a way to bring them back to life and he made this community as a way to protect everyone that he has hurt over the years. Now, of course, the Teen Titans are kind of like, okay, we need to find Harvest because none of this makes sense. The last time we saw Harvest, he was trying to kill us and now he built some kind of community. Where in the world is Harvest? And so when Red Robin actually finds Harvest, you have Harvest as an old man and you have harvest tell red robin that after the teen titans have fought against him multiple times he finally realized that maybe metahumans are not evil maybe there are good metahumans out there and so with that he basically tells red robin that after their last couple fights he realized that he should use his technology from the future to help today's world. And so that is what he's been doing. He's been basically using his technology from his alternate timeline, his alternate future to help today's world for the better. Now, here's the big thing though. With him using his tech for today's world, he's basically a dying old man because that tech was keeping him alive. Now, you do have Red Robin kind of thinks that Harvest is actually being a good person now. He actually believes that maybe Harvest has changed, that there is a way for someone bad as Harvest to turn good, to realize how he was wrong when he first attacked the Teen Titans and the rest of the teenage heroes in the world. Maybe Harvest is actually good. And so you have Red Robin actually meet up with the rest of the Teen Titans. Now, when he does that, he basically tells the Teen Titans what Harvest has told him, that Harvest is now a good guy. And Harvest had actually offered the Teen Titans a way to give them a cure, a cure to cure them from their metagene. And remember, the metagene is what makes a human a metahuman. It's what gives them their powers. And apparently Harvest has a way to get rid of their powers. And so you have the Teen Titans basically say that when it comes to Harvest, Harvest is lying. Harvest is up to something. We need to break back into that facility to learn what in the world that man is actually up to. And that is the moment you have the Teen Titans actually break in. But when they do break in, they do find what Harvest is actually working for. And apparently, it's some kind of device that makes a huge DNA strand of all the different metahuman powers that he has stolen from other metahumans across the world. And that is what he was going to do with the rest of the Teen Titans. Remove their metagene and add it to this huge 
DNA strand. And of course, it could lead to Harvest gaining all the different abilities of different metahumans that he has kidnapped over the years. Now, you do have the Teen Titans try to run away from the DNA strand because apparently it does come to life and it was able to grab the Teen Titans and defeat them. But of course, this leads up to where we saw Red Robin in that room defeated and seems like he was about to die because this moment right here happens right before the beginning of this chapter. We come to find out the person that was about to kill Red Robin was no other than Harvest. And this actually leads into a conversation between Harvest and Red Robin. Because remember, Harvest is from an alternate timeline and he came here to build an army of metahumans to help him fight against the metahumans in his timeline. But now what Harvest is doing is he's stealing powers from metahumans in this timeline to take with him to the other timeline, his timeline, to defeat the army of metahumans that he has been fighting for so long. But with that being said though, you actually have Harvest right now telling Red Robin how Red Robin is wrong for protecting metahumans because metahumans are evil. Metahumans are going to wipe out the earth. But with that being said, you have Tim Drake basically tell Harvest, if you hate metahumans so much, then why did you become one? That right there is very important. You hate metahumans so much, you became one to actually defeat metahumans. You went against your own code to end a war in a different timeline. Now, before they're able to actually continue their conversation, you do have Bonker use his powers, which is con constructs, to break open the armor of Harvest, to get rid of the armor of Harvest. And the reason why, because remember what I said earlier, the technology that Harvest has was keeping him alive because he was an old man. And with him being an old man, without that tech, he's basically a dying old man. And so he kind of dies right there in that facility. You do have the Teen Titans leave and they do blow up the whole facility, which they're hoping this can finally end their war against Harvest. Harvest was the reason why the Teen Titans came together and with him gone, the Teen Titans can finally rest. And that is how the Teen Titans kind of ended in the New 52. And the reason why I say kind of, because right after this book right here came out, we got a brand new Teen Titans series. It was relaunched with a new creative team to hopefully bring life to the Teen Titans, to bring fans back in, to hopefully enjoy the Teen Titans once again in the new 52 era. And we are actually going to cover that series because it's only like four volumes and that is it. And honestly, we can walk through those issues very easily. But with that being said, this is where we are going to end today's comic book video so please leave me a like down below and subscribe also if you have any suggestions on books i should read well please let me know in the comments below because you never know your suggestion could be a future video down the road but guys i'll see y'all next time later